Hello and welcome to the Wednesday News Show. The beers are back. Cheers. So this weekend saw the kickoff of the lead World Cup season and it started in Vila in Switzerland. The conditions in the beautiful town of Vila in Switzerland have been difficult for the qualification round, with rain and heavy mist making things slippery. Luckily, the sun came out for the finals. In the men's comp, we're more used to seeing Japan's Tomo Narasaki dominate bouldering comps, but he put in a strong performance in Vila. He looked super smooth throughout the route, but fell on the blue crimpy section. Enough for a brilliant bronze medal. Last year's overall winner, France's Romain de Grange, is a lead climbing specialist, and it's interesting to see what kind of form he's in this season. He got to the final dino sequence of the route, but chose to do it statically. A foot pop, though, meant he couldn't complete the move, leaving him in second place. Austria's Jakob Schuber has clearly been putting in the work in the off-season, looking visibly stronger than last year. He was on great form, putting on a show for the audience and managing to get to the same move as Roman. However, he tried the dino version, but didn't quite stick it. Using the scores from the semi-finals to determine the winner, Jakob just pipped Roman to the gold medal position. In the women's comp, veteran Korean climber Jane Kim managed to get onto the podium. She looked strong and in control, using all her experience to work out the tricky sequences. However, she wasn't quite balanced near the top of the wall, falling to receive a bronze medal. Austria's Jessica Pilz has been on nine World Cup podiums before Vila, but has never managed to take the win. She made it to 10 podium places in Vila, taking the silver medal and staking her position as a contender for the overall win this season. Jessica, though, is going to have to battle Slovenia's Janja Garnbrett, who is the favourite going into the new season. She's been taking time off the climbing circuit to finish school, and no one quite knew what shape she'd be in when she returned. She climbed higher than anyone else, getting to the final hold before taking a whip. In what almost seems routine now, Janja added another gold medal to her collection. So an amazing competition, and it turns out that this man, Epic TV athlete Stefano Gasolfi, is in town for the Chamonix World Cup. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity to grab you and talk a little bit about Vila. So fourth position, fourth place. Congratulations, number one. Thank you. How did it go for you? How did it all feel? Uh, I felt pretty good. I was uh, um, in a good shape, I think. And uh, I didn't expect maybe to to do that good because uh, in qualification I was uh, around sixth position. In uh, semi-final I was uh, eighth. So I was just for a, a move. Uh, I was risky to to be out of the final. But then I I think I climbed uh, pretty well in the final and uh, I'm pretty happy about uh, my climb. Last year you had a less of a good start to the season, uh, you were a bit lower down the rankings. Does it feel good to, to be in a position now coming to the rest of the season where you're, you're a real contender for the rest of the championship? Uh, yeah, I think it's better to, to have a good start. Last year I started in uh, Villars with uh, 11th place mm -hmm. and then I was second at the end. This year I'm fourth in uh, Villar, so I think <laughs> I could do better in the next Your trajectory is going yeah, up, yeah, hopefully. The anyway. goal is that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, traditionally, you tend to do really well in China. Why is that? What is it about <laughs> China that you're yeah, so good at? Good question. I don't know. I, but uh, I think uh, it's about the, the period of the, of the year that I'm, I think, in uh, good shape in uh, October. And uh, always the competition in China are in, in October, so I'm in the best shape uh, of the year uh, in, uh, when I'm in China, so I won in China. So you're kind of peaking at that point. Yeah, I think yeah. so. So you're now in Chamonix. Uh, what do you do as a pro athlete? You've just come from Vila, you're now in Chamonix. Are you training at the moment or do you just chill? Do you relax? Like, how does that work for you these couple of days? Uh, we have a week between the competition, so uh, less than a week. Uh, so I train just uh, one time for uh, not to, to be too pumped. Uh, in the, I train in, in the warm-up uh, gym in uh, Chamonix. Oh, in the school place. In the school place, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, so I, I'm not training uh, very hard because uh, I prefer to, to be fresh for the competition. Nice, man. Well, we're going to see you in Chamonix in a few days. So best of luck for that competition. Everyone here at Epic TV will be cheering you on. Thank you. Uh, right, that's this man done. Now to Hugo with the BBC's The British Bouldering Champ Highlights. There is always a strong turnout for the BBCs, with experienced competitors taking on younger climbers in a battle to be crowned the best comp boulderer in Britain. For the woman, Natalie Berry came third, showing she's still got her competition pedigree. 
Jen Woods, always strong, took second and young Hannah Slaney, who was looking in amazing form, took the win. For the men, veteran Dave Barons on his 15th BBC comp took third. There was a monumental battle for first place between Matt Cousins and Nathan Phillips. Eventually, Nathan took the win, leaving Matt in second place. What just happened? Oh, we replaced you with a pro climber for a bit. <laughs> Fair enough. He was very good. <laughs> Um, anyway, BBCs, uh, yeah, so that was quite interesting. Um, new guard in the, in the females, other than mm -hmm. Natalie Berry, obviously third. Well done, Natalie Berry, amazing. UKC editor, mm -hmm. full-time, and just does this on the part-time. Comes third in the bouldering, well done, Casual smashed lads. it. Uh, Hannah Slaney coming first. Yeah. Young guns coming through. Looking we so strong. Saw her at Studio Block in the finals. Yeah, yeah. Really, really impressive. So well done, Hannah. And then in the men's, um, yeah, so it was kind of the old guard <laughs> pack doing the same kind of thing. Well, so Dave Barron's... new winner, because Nathan's never won it before. So he's but... sort of taken over that crown, perhaps. Okay, yeah. Go. That, was, that was, yeah, that links to your thing. What thing? The new, new guns, young guns. New guns, young guns. Yeah, return. Um, and uh, yeah, so basically, Dave Barron's come third uh, in his 15th comp. Super impressive. He's been around for ages. Yeah. He's not even that old. Uh, Matt Cousins, I think he won it a couple of years ago. Mm, I think so, don't Yeah. I? And Nathan Phillips winning for the first time. Nice one, Nathan. So sticking with the British climbing theme, Angus Killy, another British climber, has done the eighth repeat of the Indian face in North Wales. The Indian face has a reputation for being incredibly dangerous with terrible gear and snappy holds. Angus has been thinking about doing the route for a long time and in a UKC article talks about his feelings of apprehension towards it. He had to change his sequence halfway through the route and then the climb came into the sun near the top, making it a sweaty experience. I imagine it would be a sweaty, sweaty experience anyway without the heat of the sun. Yeah, it's, it's notoriously like terrifying. Um, yeah. I, I actually met Angus when I was in uh, Margalef. Um, oh, okay. Climbed with him and he's super strong. He was on sighting AA and has this real desire to not just climb sport climbing, he's just super into trad. So amazing Angus, nice one mate. Is he, what is he, a young gun? Uh, he's younger than me, but everyone is. Apart from me. Apart from you. It's your say. birthday yesterday, wasn't it? Yep. That's why we were on the beers, because it was a big night last night, wasn't it? Happy birthday. No. Like, no? Semi-big. Semi-big, but semi-big is still big. It's... <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, we know what you mean. Right, another news. Uh, we've got an 80 ascent from Daniel Woods in the Rocklands. He has climbed a climb called... Not Law and Order, which is an 80 plus. He's already always also climbed, sorry. But he's climbed a Nally Hooktaville uh, uh, line called Finish Line, which is 8C uh, in Rockland, so which is very, very cool. There's a big group of guys down in Rocklands at the moment, so it's all really kind of happening out there. Also where it's happening is in Canmore in Canada, where Adam Andra is on a bit of a sending spree, an unsighting spree to be more exact. He had a little day the other day where he unsighted an 8C plus called First Flight, and he also, uh, on site, another one called AB Plus, uh, not called AB Plus, it was an AB Plus called Las Ojas, uh, or, or just Ojas each, even, which was kind of a slabby AB Plus. So very impressive. Apparently, Bernard Wood, who does a lot of films with Adam, is out there filming with him, and films should be coming out on his YouTube channel. So cool. uh, stay tuned. Nice. Yeah. Uh, 9B counter. Get a bit more excited than that, no? <laughs> Uh, so why are you not very excited about the 9B counter this week? Uh, well, there's nothing on it, number one. But we do have to we do have to talk about the, the poll we put Seboin. out. Sebois. Sebois. So we put it to you guys uh, to comment. Let us know if you think Sebois 9A plus slash 9B should be on the 9B counter. Yet you again, want... you went with Matt and not with me. I'm beginning to think, guys, that you don't like me very much. No, come on. People and like you. You're a good guy. I just feel like sometimes... No. Yes. Anyway, Adam Ondra's working on a route at the moment, which uh, is, is going to be a first sentence near Canmore. Apparently the 515 range has been talked about, so that could be another one. 515A is 9A+. plus. What are we going to do if it's 9A plus slash B? We're going to re-put it to... We're going to have no, to. I think we've made the rule now. 9A plus B does not Doesn't make count. it on, even if it's Adam Ondra. Mm. Um, which is, uh, yeah. People have spoken. Yeah, that's like a... We yeah. made the rule. Yeah. Yeah, no more. <laughs> Thank you. 
So the reason we might be looking a little, well, I might be looking a little bit jaded is because we had the Arcteryx Academy all weekend and it was a little bit crazy. We've literally been working a lot for quite yeah. a long time. Yeah. Uh, but, and the videos are starting to come out. Uh, you edited a really cool sort of general highlights video that came out yesterday. Yeah, and then on last Friday, we had a Katie Whitaker versus Matt uh, battle, Yeah, uh, which I think we should show a little clip of now. She's, she's stretching a long way up. Into the top hold, right, okay, that was uh, I can't even remember what I did. <laughs> I think I can remember, so you start, start down low. Yeah. Did you use the jug or did you use that one? That one? No, I think I just used these two. Okay. And then went to this. Right. And then orange, orange. Then top orange, orange. Okay, no feet. <laughs> it looks like he's doing a heel dab on the mat there. Not a dab. <laughs> Yes! Yes! <laughs> Fine. Yep, I blame wet conditions and lack of lank for that. Uh, brief pause while well, we get the face paints. I really wish I had won. Okay. <laughs> so many people are walking past, like either giggling or taking photos. Katie, this is my professional reputation gone forever. Thank you very much. No worries. Anytime. Uh, what else? So we did like a general roundup show, which uh, which went out on Tuesday, yeah. and then we got. Well, Friday's Nina Caprez. So Nina Caprez giving big wall tips on a portal ledge to yeah. me. Uh, we did the into on a portal ledge. Yeah. Yeah. So that's worth watching. That's on Friday. Mm -hmm. And then we also did this big challenge day where me and Matt tried to get to as many clinics as possible in a day, mm. uh, and we filmed it. Uh, like vlog style, like a bit more. Yeah. A bit more just you and me. Running around Germany. Yeah. But there's loads of interviews to come as well. There's film night stuff. So there's, it's going to be rolling out next couple of weeks. Keep an eye on that. Yeah. Um, We've also got, <clears throat> excuse me, Cold House Media. Mm -hmm. uh, new vlog. Still, new vlog is out uh, at FPTV.com. And also, I um, want to talk a little bit about, is it Stone Kingdom? Stone Kingdom. Yeah, because we, we saw who? Nick Brown. Nick Brown. We Nick saw Brown. Nick Brown at the weekend. So Very talented memory. filmmaker who works with the UKC. Mm. Uh, and a couple of years ago, he did a series for us called Stone Kingdom. And we are kind of like re-releasing it, like yeah. re Throwback. republishing it. Uh, because it is, uh, I think it's an amazing series. Here's a little uh, clip of the first one. So that's Ned Fihali and Dan Varian. Dan Varian, that's yep. it. Crushing, hard. Yeah, really cool film. And it's coming out on the homepage throughout this week. The first one's up and the rest are going to roll out. So yep. that's cool. Big time. Uh, we finished off with the summer sale because it's going on right now. It's massive, it's huge, but things are selling out quickly. And we're already having people commenting saying that stuff goes. It does go. Once it's gone, that's it. Never to be seen again. So if you see a bargain and you want it, grab it quickly because this thing's coming to an end very soon. That's it, I think. Done? Yeah, I just want to say a quick uh, cheers to James uh, Kinsella, who wrote me a very nice email about um, uh, being like watching Epic TV and starting climbing at mm. the same time. So James, that's for you. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. Anything else you want to talk about? Oh, I'm doing this the IFSC commentary. Oh yeah, we've Tune having... in, IFSC commentary, to, uh, Thursday, oh, tomorrow. Right? We can talk about it yeah, again. Yeah, we'll talk about it again. Yeah. Just push it. It's fine. Say hi to Charlie. <laughs> I will. Charlie who? Bosco. Exactly. Bye.